Uh, hello and uh, welcome to this video lecture in the course uh, for Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, in this video lecture, we will look at a recent uh, hardware attack which is known as a row hammer. So, these, this attack would uh, let you flip bits stored in the DRAM without actually accessing them. Uh, it is a quite a recent attack, uh, it was uh, discovered in 2014 and since then there have been various exploits which have used this technique to uh, mount different types of attacks on uh, applications and systems. Also there have been uh, many countermeasures that uh, have been developed in the recent past uh, to prevent this attack. A lot of these slides are actually borrowed from Professor Onur Mutlu's talk in date. Uh, in 2017. So, before we go into what Rohammer means, we would uh, like a small uh, background about DRAMs. DRAM as you know is one of the uh, typical structures which are used for random access memories uh, in systems. So, a typical DRAM would look something like this way. Uh, these DRAMs are capacitive memories and uh, they are arranged in this uh, matrix like thing with rows and columns. Uh, with a capacitor at each node. One particular DRAM cell would look like this. Uh, there is a transistor and an as associated capacitor. So, uh, when a, a 1 needs to be stored on this capacitor, uh, the capacitor is charged uh, and in order to read the capacitance, uh, this transistor is turned on and uh, the, the data either 1 or 0 whether the capacitor is charged or discharged is actually read through this particular bit line. So, essentially the uh, charge of the capacitor defines uh, whether uh, this memory cell uh, is storing a 1 or a 0 and uh, capacitor must be large enough. The problem that may occur in uh, capacitors is that the charge on the capacitor may gradually leak over a period of time. Thus, in order that a DRAM cell holds its uh, charge, it is required that the DRAM cells be recharged periodically. So, in order to uh, achieve this, uh, what would happen is that there would be a special external circuitry which periodically reads every cell uh, in the DRAM and, and rewrites it uh, therefore, restoring the charge of the capacitor. So, this refreshing phase ensures that uh, the charge on the capacitance is restored and maintained for a longer period. So, uh, this particular figure over here shows uh, how the refreshing occurs. So, refreshing typically occurs periodically in a, a DRAM structure. So, these particular areas is where the uh, DRAM is inaccessible due to the uh, refreshing period where uh, the capacitors are recharged, while the accessible regions in the DRAM uh, is over here. So, any load or a store operation to a DRAM has to be within this particular time period. Now, as we mentioned, uh, DRAMs are arranged in uh, rows. So, every time we want to actually read a particular uh, memory location, the entire row is activated and the charges stored from sto stored in the various capacitors are then copied into this row buffer. Uh, from the row buffer, it would then move to the various other components of the system uh, including the cache memories and the processors. Now, uh, as uh, time progressed um, and memories became more and more complex, it was required to actually scale down and have more dense memories. As a result, uh, the number of such rows present in a DRAM was actually reducing over a period of time. Now, a consequence of this scaling was that the, the gap between these rows also reduced and since the cells in each row uh, worked due to the charge present, as the space between the rows uh, reduced. Uh, it became more and more likely that uh, there would be interference between these various roads. Uh, essentially, the, uh, the closer the charge bodies are, the higher the electromagnetic interference between the various rows. This fact was actually utilized uh, in the row hammer. What the row hammer vulnerability actually showed was that if a particular row in the DRAM was continuously accessed, uh, this continuous memory access could actually influence the neighboring rows. So, for example, over here we had uh, one uh, specific row which has been continuously accessed and uh, it could influence the charge stored in the adjacent rows. 
the reason for this is that continuously toggling the row voltage slightly opens the adjacent rows thus forcing the uh, adjacent rows to leak much more quickly. In other words, the adjacent rows would actually discharge much more faster than uh, the refresh period. The result is that uh, certain cells on the adjacent rows may get corrupted and the data present in them may actually be toggled. Now, uh, this is an example of how a row hammer attack would work and uh, this uh, animation is taking, uh, taken from uh, this particular website uh, from Manchester University. Uh, what the attacker would do is that uh, he would toggle specific rows in the DRAM and access them continuously within a refresh period. Now, this would influence the neighboring rows and uh, force the uh, data present in the neighboring rows to be toggled. So, this is represented here uh, by these green and red uh, uh, blocks. The green blocks show what the attacker is legally accessing, while the red uh, blocks show what uh, show the effect of falls uh, induced due to the row hammering uh, of the DRAM. So, what we are able to achieve is that we have been able to toggle uh, adjacent rows just uh, by accessing memory locations at a very high rate. Now, uh, why this is actually critical is uh, that you are modifying the integrity of the st storage of the data stored in the memory. For example, let us say that uh, we have operating system specific data uh, present in this specific row. For example, uh, this may be uh, say a pa particular page table and more particularly this MIT may specify that a page is accessible only by the kernel. Now, uh, by inducing an error through the row hammering of uh, the adjacent rows, uh, we would be able to modify uh, the contents of the page table. So, we would for, for example, be able to convert a page which is uh, meant only for the kernel uh, to be accessible by user programs also. A typical uh, row hammer program would look something like this. Uh, you could actually look at the source code uh, over here from where this code has been borrowed. Uh, it is quite simple, it has a small loop in which uh, we target very specific uh, uh, rows within the DRAM. So, in this particular case, we are uh, targeting this row x and y and forcing memory accesses uh, to be done on these rows. Note that uh, the contents of this particular memory location is loaded into the EAX register and uh, uh, EBX register as shown over here. The CLF flush instructions is supported by x86 systems to flush the data corresponding to x and y from the cache memory. So, this would ensure that the DRAMs are always accessed during these load instructions and the load does not actually obtain the data from the cache memories. The mfence instruction is used to serialize the transfers uh, to the DRAM. So, this uh, small set of instructions is repeated over and over again at a very high rate, thus posing continuous access to uh, rows in the DRAM. Now, as we have seen in the previous um, animations, uh, doing so within uh, at a rate much faster than the refresh period of the DRAM would cause the adjacent rows to lose charge and for induce errors and falls in the uh, adjacent rows. This vulnerability has been used to actually mount several different attacks. These attacks for example, can be written in JavaScript and force web applications to obtain root privileges. Other attacks uh, are the rampage attacks and the glitch attacks. You could actually look up these attacks for more details. Since the discovery of uh, row hammer, there have been uh, several solutions that have been proposed. So, these solutions have been uh, done at various levels. At the hardware level now, DRAMs are uh, designed in such a way so that the effect of uh, such that row hammer is less likely to happen. Uh, also, uh, things like uh, increasing the refresh rate, uh, adding uh, more sophisticated error correction techniques have been used in the hardware to actually make this to take care of the solutions. Uh, similarly, uh, techniques in the operating system like ensuring that the DRAM is partitioned and sensitive and non-sensitive data are not placed adjacent to each other on the DRAM. Other techniques like identifying patterns of usage in the DRAM is done using uh, things like performance counters present in modern processors and this is then used to, uh, to prevent uh, any row hammer like attacks. So, the uh, code for the attack can be downloaded. Thank you. <laughs>